When I was born, my parents voted to call me Matthew Beat. Most of you watching probably would vote to call me Mr. Beat, but if you are one of the many people who disagree with me about the Electoral College, I don't think it's good, but if you think it's good, perhaps you would vote to have other, meaner names for me. My video dunking on the Electoral College is my most disliked video on my channel. 32% of people who have watched it have disliked it. Sad to say, many of the dislikes came from people who didn't even bother watching the whole video. The whole video is 19 minutes long, and just 14 minutes after I posted it, it already had 11 dislikes. Way to keep an open mind, internet! Even recently, Electoral College defenders are still very angry at me for this video, leaving me comments like this. You are an idiot. The Electoral College is to protect the Republic. If you do not like America, then leave. It's very simple and very clear. You have no idea what you are talking about. And this. Good grief. I just found your channel. This video is far worse than I could possibly have imagined. You spend 19 minutes on the Electoral College and never once attempt to explain why it was established in the first place. Place. We're left thinking it had something to do with racism and white male privilege. This is pure propaganda. Well, first of all, it was propaganda. I'm not sure if it was pure propaganda, but yeah, the video, the whole point of the video was to <laughs> promote the idea that the Electoral College was bad. But here's the thing. I try to keep an open mind, and I always love a good challenge. I read the comments because I wanted to see if Electoral College defenders could present some good counterpoints to what I was arguing. Sad to say, most of the comments were just repeating very tired talking points or ad hominem attacks. Oh look, they are again referencing a quote attributed to Benjamin Franklin that I first heard in middle school. Thanks. Democracy is not freedom. Democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to eat for lunch. Look, the analogy is way off here. Think about it. It'd be more accurate to say democracy is three lambs voting on what to eat for lunch. <sighs> oh, by the way, there is no evidence that Benjamin Franklin ever said that. The quote has been attributed to him only for about the past 22 years, and according to my research, was first printed in the Los Angeles Times in 1992. Regardless, I did want to try to respond to the comments that made the best points. At the same time, I will be responding to this video by a dude named Andrew from a channel called Don't Run, Walk It Out Productions. I mean, walk, run, or uh, hold up. Don't walk, run, productions. I'll admit it was one of the better videos I have come across defending the Electoral College in recent years. Andrew clearly knows his stuff. Unfortunately, he thinks I don't even know the definition of republic. Let's get rid of the Electoral College, which the United States has been successfully using for centuries because a guy arguing with a puppet doesn't understand what a republic is. I mean, in that same video, he is criticizing, I gave the definition of republic Public, but here it is again. A republic is a type of government in which supreme power resides in a body of citizens entitled to vote and is exercised by representatives responsible to them and governing according to law. But first, if you are watching this video as an electoral college defender, as someone who likes the electoral college or at least thinks it shouldn't go away, first of all, thank you for watching. Second, you are a rare cookie, meaning that most people don't dare get out of their echo chamber. They'd rather just always watch stuff that confirms their own biases. This is why I am excited to once again be sponsored by Ground News, a news platform that makes it easy to get out of your echo chambers by showing you how breaking news is being covered across the political spectrum. It's a great way to teach media literacy, and I've been promoting Ground News to friends and family for at least a year now at this point. Ground News helps you compare how the same story is being framed by left, center, and right sources. Just look at this example here. Not only does it help you spot media bias, it helps you see which news stories are being underreported by the left or right. Ground News also helps you see how international stories are being told across the globe using the interactive map. If you're looking for a better way to stay informed about current events around the world, check out Ground News by going to ground.news slash MrBeat. 
The link's in the description, yo. Dude, you are an idiot. It's called Tyranny of the Majority. It's simple. I'm sorry if you can't comprehend it. You really didn't give a good argument against mob rule. Fair enough. I guess I need to expand on the mob rule bits because I didn't say much about it in the first video. First of all, saying that democracy inevitably leads to mob rule is a slippery slope fallacy. I think majoritarianism, an idea which says that the majority of the population is entitled to a certain degree of primacy in society, is a good thing. And you know what? The majority of folks out there also think majoritarianism is a good thing, so see what I did there? Odds are you think majoritarianism is a good thing too. You tend to make choices based on majorities, don't you? If the majority of people tell you Whataburger is good, and it is, you give it a try. If the majority of people tell you that the Shawshank Redemption is a good movie, and it is, you watch it. Why can't you trust the majority to pick the right political candidate? Because that candidate sucks, okay? Well, that's just your opinion, man. But you like people to know your opinion, don't you? You like your voice to be heard? That smells like democracy to me. Literally every other election in the country is done by a majority vote. Heck, electoral college defenders are even cool with the majority of electoral votes being counted. So what about the mob? Well, mobs can be irrational. Mobs can be violent. We saw this. On January 6th, when a mob tried to overturn a, you know, election. But governments literally can also be violent and irrational. But governments are made up of people. Getting rid of the electoral college doesn't mean we'd have mob rule or a tyranny of the majority. We'd still live in a constitutional republic, so the law would rule over all else, and representatives would still make major decisions. It's an indirect democracy, so there'd still be safeguards against mobs. But maybe you're still worried about minorities not having a voice. Well, majoritarianism doesn't mean the minority has no voice. There are still plenty of safeguards for the minority. Take, I don't know, the entire U.S. Constitution, which spells out the limited powers of the federal government and even lists out specific individual rights every citizen has. For example, religious minorities in the United States are protected. Ethnic minorities in the United States even are often get special treatment for crying out loud. Minorities can be mobs too. Oh no, here's the mob of electoral college defenders furiously typing about how wrong I am. According to the mob of electoral college defenders, even though they are a minority, they are the best mob to represent us. Okay, enough about mobs. I did get a lot of people defending what Steven Crowder actually meant when he said that the United States was never a democracy. The United States has never been a democracy. When Crowder made the statement that the United States is not a democracy, that's because it isn't. And when Mr. Beat says that Crowder is claiming that we don't have democracy, it's because he's not listening to words. Crowder never said that. Crowder meant America has never been a direct democracy. That is pretty clear. Assuming this is coming at me in good faith and not attempting to move the goalpost, I apologize for misrepresenting Crowder there. I do agree with Crowder here that the United States has never had a direct democracy. Well, except for referendums and recall elections, but that's at the local and state levels. So yeah, at the federal level, Crowder is right. And I agree that we should shouldn't have direct democracy at the federal level. By the way, much of the criticisms of my original video were examples of the straw man fallacy. They were attacking a straw man. I never once called for a direct democracy to replace our constitutional republic. I just think we should vote for president, you know, the same way we vote for literally every other public office in this country. Speaking of logical fallacies, there were also several faulty appeal to authority fallacy comments. The problem with utopian theorists is that they expect a perfect world. The founding were far more ahead to their contemporaries and most of their ideas are still very relevant now and in the future. Yes, there's things to improve on, but what the founding fathers did is just awesome. It's done its purpose for over 200 years. Don't change it because you're mad you didn't get the result you wanted. The founders set it up that way for a reason. People that don't like 
like the electoral college think they are smarter than the founders. I think those very smart people should change in the Senate too. Why should all the states get only two senators? Founding fathers this, and founding fathers that. It's a faulty appeal to authority fallacy because people are saying the electoral college must be good because the founding fathers believed it was good. But the founding fathers didn't have access to the same information we do today. No offense to the founding fathers, but you watching this video right now are likely much more informed than they ever were. Plus, if the founding fathers were around today, do you really think they would have the exact same views about the Electoral College? Read Anti-Federalist Paper number 72, by the way. Democracy does not exist on the federal level, but it does exist on the state level. To clarify, we don't have a national election, there are 50 separate state elections. Because again, the United States is a republic. The United States is a republic. The best argument is that it prevents the possibility of having a nationwide recount, which would be a headache and allow for corruption easily. With basically 50 separate state elections, we only need recounts in at most one or two states. Ah, but you can still have 50 separate elections without the Electoral College. Federalism doesn't have to be put aside to reform how we elect the president and vice president. In fact, did you know that federal elections are already incredibly decentralized? Most states report election results at the precinct level, which is a small area in which all voters go to a single polling place to vote. Spoken like a true socialist, democracy appears nowhere in the Constitution. Communists chose not to read it like yourself. So what? The word privacy isn't in the Constitution. Constitution. There's nothing about political parties in there. Nothing about contraceptives or abortion. Nothing about corporations or labor unions. So much of what we get out of the Constitution these days is implied, not literally in the text. And it's been that way since at least 1819. It protects the minority states from majority states. Imagine living in Kansas State and there is a vote that New York and Kansas had to vote on a law that would change your lifestyle. If you're Kansas, you're screwed. That username, though. Anyway, no. With a popular vote, every vote is equal. Also, every person in one state doesn't vote the same way. And if anything, borders are becoming increasingly meaningless when it comes to cultural differences. The federal government is not supposed to govern individuals. States are supposed to govern as individual nations. The federal government is supposed to govern between states. The only reason that people think this whole argument makes sense is because the federal government has its slimy tentacles in way too many areas of individual life. Yeah, it's a good argument, although it still feels a bit post hoc. Then again, this comment seems to be from someone stuck in 1787, as many electoral college defenders often apparently are. Uh, can someone send these guys a time machine? We ought to look at the electoral college through the lens of 2022. It's not the 1780s anymore, okay? Now, at the root of my argument against the Electoral College is that the, the president, president ought not, not represent, represent the states, states but, but the people. people. The presidency, well, the executive branch as a whole, has rapidly become nationalized since the founding of the Republic. The federal government has tremendous influence over our lives and greatly supersedes state power. Sure, this wasn't always the case, but over time, especially over the past past 100 years, the federal government has had more and more of an active role in the lives of Americans, and the courts have mostly been okay with such an increase of federal power. Now, you can disagree with that, fine, but you need to accept the reality which we're living in. Not only that, states depend heavily on the federal government these days. For example, West Virginia gets 45% of its revenue from federal sources. Yeah, I'd be screwed without the federal government. And yeah, I know the founders generally wanted the states to elect the president, not the people directly. I know, okay? I teach this for a living. But uh, that can change. We can change that. And as I, as I said in my previous video, a lot has happened since 1787. We have telegraphs now. 
the people should elect the president. Would that give the president even more power than they have now? Absolutely not. And anyone who has made that claim has yet to provide evidence to back that up. I was a bit surprised at how many electoral college defenders loved the fact that every vote was not counted equally. And the reason why small pop votes are with more than big pop votes is an attempt to even out the votes between big pop states and small pop states. So in reality, if you want to end the electoral college, that means you want big pop states to have all the power the most of the American populace are within California, New York, and Texas. Cali in New York has more people than Texas. Boom! Democrats have complete and utter power over who is made president. That's a pretty fascist thought to want to have all opposing voices to your party silenced. First of all, Florida has more people than New York. Second, I still think everyone deserves to have their voice heard equally. If you are for the Electoral College, you're okay with some people's voices being louder than others. You're okay with inequality. When you say big states like California, California and Texas will have all the power without the Electoral College. No, they won't. Because, as Electoral College defenders also say, remember, it's the Electoral College that makes it that states vote, not people. If people's individual votes are counted instead, it won't freaking matter what state they live in. Did you know that there are Democrats in Alabama and Republicans in Massachusetts? If you get rid of the Electoral College, they'd actually be hurt for the very first time in presidential elections. And again, I am saying all this as a person who benefits from the Electoral College, meaning if you live in Florida, your vote is currently counted way less right now than my vote here in Kansas. Stop trying to make it seem like I am better than you. I am not. In conclusion, if the Electoral College is so good, why is it that not one other country in the entire world has implemented it like we do? As it turns out, and I cannot stress this enough, eh, Electoral College defenders actually like democracy. They think it's great. They like ordinary people like you and me having power and having a voice. They want to be heard. In fact, they are having their voices heard right now. Look at them type away, bless their hearts. So oh, those talking points again, eh? Haven't heard that one before. Our constitutional republic should favor the majority of us. Minority rule really is horrible. I've heard your arguments to keep the electoral college for four years now, but every single one of your arguments is, and no offense, so weak and predictable that they're kind of boring at this point. It's not that I don't understand how presidential elections were supposed to go, I do. It's that how they were supposed to go sucks and it needs to change. Again, no, this doesn't mean I want a direct democracy. I want a true representative democracy. But there is overwhelming evidence right now that the federal government is not truly representative of what the majority of Americans want. That said, over the years I have become less rigid on my opinions about the Electoral College, mostly from hearing from Electoral College defenders. And so I am willing to compromise. At the very least, I want every state to divide up their electoral votes by districts, just like Maine and Nebraska does. Can we at least get that? But then again, it's more fun to complain about things than actually find a solution. Well, I just offered a solution, but additionally, I think we should implement either star voting or ranked choice voting on top of that to make the presidential elections more representative. I've made videos on how those work, by the way. And if you still don't agree with that, let your voice be heard by commenting below. And if you do want to get rid of the Electoral College or reform it, let me know by hitting that like button. You know, it's almost as if you are voting on this video.